Now, in this iron sources, uh, if you see what are the when you design, what are the things you will look for? One is that what kind of species can make negative ions and what kind kind of intensity it can give. Not all the species or not all the elements make negative ions. So, uh, what kind of uh, negative ions can be made by that ion source that will and the beam quality. Beam quality, when we talk about, we talk of uh, brightness as well as emittance. And emittance uh, is the most important parameter. And in a layman language, you can say the emittance is nothing but uh, similar to uh, divergence. So if the, if the divergence of beam is large, uh, then the, of course that uh, emittance is similar to that, but it is in the phase space. And therefore, the emittance should be like divergence should be small, emittance also should be small. Uh, now, this is when we are talking of uh, uh, one dimensional or two dimensional trajectories, then we talk of divergence. When we, and when we are talking of uh, phase space, six dimensional phase space, we talk of uh, emittances. This I have discussed in one of the lectures in great detail. Then, of course, uh, when uh, uh, ions are made out of uh, any gas or material or element, uh, what is the ionization efficiency, reliability, material utilization efficiency is equally important because there are some cases where very small quantity in uh, sometimes even the, uh, less than micro, uh, milligrams of sample is available and you have to use it for pretty long time for uh, and therefore, the efficiency, material utilization efficiency of the ion source should be as much as possible. Then, of course, the uh, from the point of view of operation, and uh, it should be easy to do that. Duty cycle: whether a particular ion source we can run, run it for 100% time, duty cycle is 100%, or it has to be pulsed. So that also is one of the characteristics and offer the source uh, source lifetime. So these are some of the characteristics uh, which define whether the ion source is good or uh, uh, improvement is required. There are uh, different kind of mechanisms which are responsible for, uh, for example, for negative ions formation, which is very important. In fact, a lot of R&D is uh, being done on these negative ion sources today. And uh, you can see that one is uh, radiative capture where uh, any element, neutral element X picks up electron and make uh, a negative ion and emits, uh, uh, emits a radiation, H nu. And it emits radiation or momentum transfer of third body. So this is one, uh, one type of ion sources uh, process which is involved in it. So this X prime, X negative, uh, that means initially it is formed in uh, excited state and uh, it, it will be emitting the radiation here. Here you can see. Then polar dissociation. So I am, you can see that there are different processes which are able to make these negative ions. Uh, and of course the cross-sections of, uh, cross-section of each process will be different. Some of them will be very low. That means in that case you can get uh, uh, intensity is very small. In other case that may be very high, so you will get you will be able to get. But normally negative ion yield is very small. So you can see that is a dissociative attachment or charge exchange. Now as uh, I mentioned that alpha cross uh, is based on this. So initially you make positive ions and then pass through a electronegative. Uh, material or gas or vapors and then the, then the, it will pick up electrons. So that is, uh, so first is sputtering is done and uh, so th and then the electrons are picked up, you can see here. Surface ionization is another one. Now uh, you will see that a SNIC science source is very popular not only for research point of view, but of course, uh, from the point of view of applications, because uh, uh, it can 
generate negative ions which are accelerated by protons and which are very useful for uh, AMS receptor. Now in this case you can see uh, that uh, there is an ionizer here and the cesium is uh, cesium is deposited here from uh, what you do is that cesium is put here which you heat it and that cesium goes and gets deposited at various places for example at ionizer and cathode so cesium is deposited at uh, the surface and when the when the, the this uh, is heated then the cesium plus ions will be uh, emitted out of it and they will uh, they will hit the uh, sample here which is a cathode and then the, by sputtering the negative ions will be so sputtering basically is of the neutral atom or maybe positive and those ones will pick up electrons from the cesium which is coming here and this cesium is very as a good donor of electrons because the, this outermost orbit of the cesium has only one electron and uh, the war function or the or the ionization uh, energy of that electron is very small so the electron can uh, easily get attached with those uh, uh, either positive or the neutral ions which are um, coming out of this cathode so for example suppose i want to have uh, let's say carbon negative ions so i put a carbon sample here hit with the cesium and uh, uh, carbon will come out and it will pick up uh, electrons from cesium vapors and cesium beams or the vapors and then it can uh, form negative ions and which by proper voltage on the extractor you can extract so this is a very very uh, important and very very uh, famous ion source which is used is uh, is uh, being manufactured developed and manufactured by national electrostatic corporation in usa uh, which is uh, which sells the peloton accelerators and uh, the details can be found here now there is uh, uh, another source called uh, alpha tross is equally important and why I am showing is that see for example uh, uh, in the case of palatron or tandem accelerator we need uh, negative ions to be injected now you know that uh, helium does not make negative ions uh, in the ground state and uh, there are a lot of experiments have to be done with the alpha particle beam so how to generate them so this is a source which does that what it does is uh, it uh, it creates first it creates the helium plus beam which is coming from here and then there is a uh, there is either cesium or uh, rubidium vapors are put into here either cesium or the rubidium here in the path of this uh, uh, he plus beam and they pick up electrons from there and uh, then they are extracted so it's a charge exchange positive helium picks up electrons and then becomes negative ions so this is a boom to the low energy nuclear physics or uh, nuclear physics people or even atomic physics people who want to use uh, he minus p or uh, or he plus also in peloton because he plus means uh, this he negative that means helium negative beam uh, will be first accelerated in the first uh, part of the peloton then in the stripper it will be electrons will be stripped again and it will be again a he plus or it could be he plus plus and it will be further accelerated so both beams will be available low energy beams of this and uh, high energy beams of this of course in the peloton you can get only he plus uh, but these beams also will be available if it is suppose uh, you have a single stage kind of uh, uh, accelerator then it will it, it will be possible to get this beam so this is a very interesting uh, so this is what is involved in it so it's a charge exchange and NEC again has developed uh, this ion source for the 
for the experiments uh, for um, uh, with the alpha beams this is very popular for no uh, low energy experiments and uh, the process is again listed here that he plus you can create from either dio plasmatron or any any there are several uh, ion sources which can create positive ion and then either you put in the uh, you in, this will interact with either rubidium or cesium and then the the h minus sc minus beam or uh, h uh, even the other this process is uh, again used for even the uh, uh, proton beams for making the negative ion beams and even heavier beams there is no problem so this is one there is another source which is very popular and it is used not only at low energies but also also at high energies uh, accelerators and that is dio plasmatron see most of the gases ions positive ions or even negative ions they are made by making the plasma and then you extract from this and and i uh, i plasma is always neutral that means it will contain not only positive ions but electrons but also some uh, negative ions so you can extract negative ions from that now prior to dio plasmatron from which was called plasmatron a single uh, plasma was formed in single plasmatron ion sources intermediate electrode and magnets were not there and hence the plasma density was low and low currents of the ions were extracted in dio plasmatron sources intermediate electrode and magnets is put so what is done is that you feed the gas and uh, then there is a filament here which emits uh, electrons and electron interacts with the gas and makes it uh, a plasma here and plasma will have let's say it is a uh, uh, hydrogen gas then plasma will have uh, h plus h minus and electrons also so but what happens in the first plasma the density of the plasma is low so therefore the number of uh, these particles these ions they are uh, their density is low so what you can do is that if you put intermediate electrode and then you have anode like this so that is the uh, that is the structure of the dio plasma so you have two plasmas here in second plasma the density of the these uh, ions is uh, much higher and therefore uh, you can uh, get uh, higher currents from this second one instead of a so this this plasma was not there when the, in the case of plasmatron now this you can display so what actually you are doing by do, doing this is you put a, one magnet also here so what you are doing here is uh, is uh, you are increasing the number of collisions to make it uh, so in the if the number of collisions are increased then positive ions also will be increased density and even some negative ion number also will increase so you can see here that uh, uh, that both uh, uh, in second plasma density of the plasma is high and there is one more advantage by putting this magnet one is that it is increasing the number of collisions and secondly it is having the magnetic field of for, for example if you take the motion of the ions will depend on the magnetic field so for a particular magnetic field you will find that since the positive ions are slightly lighter than the negative ions so two electrons are added to this so you will find the structure if you see the structure of this plasma it it is like this that uh, at the center you have density of positive ions which is much higher and at the periphery there will be a ring sort of thing where there will be negative ions density also will be there of course as i said that uh, uh, as compared to positive ions the 
current of uh, the probability of negative ions is only 1 to 2 percent only. So this current will be very small, this negative ion current will be very small. But uh, this itself you can see, so what you can do is when you are extracting here, if the axis of this, axis of this was matched to the extractor here, then you will see that you are basically extracting the beam from here. So you will extract more of a positive ions. Now suppose you shift that axis of this extractor in such a way that this axis is facing the uh, this ring, then you will find that more negative ions will be available, and therefore the uh, therefore the negative ions in uh, uh, current will be enhanced by shifting the by off axis extraction of the beam. So this is what is uh, basically is a DO plasma tone source. So you introduce one intermediate electrode and also a magnet. This I think uh, I have uh, discussed earlier also but just to remind you and repeat it because it's an important thing is that helium is an inert gas and it and has two electrons in the outermost orbits. So in fact if you see uh, various signs positive, neutral and negative, in principle if you go by the rules then the configuration should be that here it is now uh, since the helium has two electrons so one is removed here so it is helium plus so it should go it should remain in one S system while neutron is 1s2 and 1s can have only 2 so it's a neutral while if you want to make uh, negative ions then there will be you have to add one extra neutron so then the question is whether this one extra electron will sit in 2s or it will be somewhere else this is a question and if it sits in this uh, then negative he negative will be formed in ground state but it does not happen. It, it should be this, but it is not the bound actually. The calculations as well as measurements show that it is not a bound state here. In fact, on the other hand, they found that this HE negative is uh, formed in this case at 1S, 2S, 2P, a st metastable state. And this is a metastable state which has a lifetime of about uh, 360 mic microsecond with a binding of the binding energy of 77 milli electron volt. So that means if you want the alpha beam, you form helium negative ions which will have lifetime of about uh, 359 microsecond. And you inject and accelerate it because if your beam takes uh, uh, lo much longer time, more than this, then this electron will detach and therefore before this time it should reach the high voltage terminal and uh, it should get stripped out after acceleration. So that is what is. But this is a huge time. In the 360 microsecond, this beam can pass through the entire accelerator. So I would like to give the summary of this lecture, which is as follows. So in this lecture we have discussed different types of ion sources, mainly snakes, alpha troughs, and dioplasmatron ion sources. Dioplasmatron ion sources can produce both positive and negative ions. Although helium is an inert gas, it forms negative ion in metastable state with lifetime of uh, 359 microseconds and binding energy of 77 milli electron volt. Nitrogen 14 does not form negative ion and thus is responsible for high sensitivity for carbon 14 to carbon 12 ratio measurements for AMS studies. Thank you.